Hello everybody, it's Brian and I'm back with another solution set, this time for assignment number four, the cotter pin. Um, in some respects this is a really easy drawing exercise, in a couple of other respects it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so if we look at the geometry of the cotter pin, it is a perfect example of where you would want to use a sweep. Um, so the path that we're going to follow, unlike in the example uh, that I did, is not a centerline path. This time it's an inside path. So if you look, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit here. If we zoom in on the cutter pin, it's actually this inside line that comes up and goes around and comes back down. That is the path that we're going to use to follow. Um, and one of your first clues that, that should, that's your path is that all of the um, dimension callouts are all based on the geometry for that inside scale, right? Even this two and a half dimension down here. Um, so that's the first maybe challenge is just realizing that that is the path you want to follow. It doesn't fall in the center, it actually falls on the outside edge. Um, which you should think about then if this is the cross-sectional geometry of that cotter pin, it's this point here, the center of this line, that is the thing that should be coincident with that path. So this is no longer the middle of that circle, it's now the edge of this flat on that, um, that cross-section. Uh, so that's, that's challenge number two, is identifying where this should be in relationship with the path. Uh, and the third challenge is really just about how do we draw this consistent geometry and orient it around a center point that isn't the origin. Um, so all of those things sort of make it a little bit more difficult, but at the same time, it really shouldn't take long uh, to do those things. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to open up a new tab. And um, the plane doesn't really matter. Uh, I think maybe I'll choose the top plane. So I'm going to create a sketch, choose the top plane to draw on. Um, I'm, the origin point is going to be the start of my pass. I'm going to come up, I'm going to come around, and then come down from that. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and start to draw that right now. So I'm going to uh, invoke the line command, click on the origin point, I'm going to come up, and the whole height is about 100. So I'm going to come up you know, a little bit less than that maybe, just so I'm close on dimensions. Uh, I'm going to click and then I'm going to come back to that endpoint, click and hold to start to create the first tangent arc. That's just a short tangent arc, so I'm going to let go. Uh, I'm back at that point. I'm going to click and hold and then I'm going to pull out the second part of this, which is that top circle. Click and hold. Oops. Click and hold and come down for this tangent arc. Come back over here somewhere. That looks about good, just to make sure I have an arc there. And then I'm going to come back down and stop uh, perpendicular to the origin. So again, that kind of roughs in the geometry. Uh, if I look, do I have a tangent here? I do. I have a tangent here. I have a tangent here. I'm missing a tangent here. So before I do anything else, I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to click that line, hold down shift, click that line, and add in another tangent. Okay. Now, this is clearly a mirror geometry, but because of this circle breaking through that mirror point, I just think this is easier to do without using a mirror command. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to set up a center line for myself, and I'm going to do this in two ways. So first thing I'm going to do, invoke the line command again, I'm going to click the origin point, I'm going to click the end point of that, and I'm going to make this line a construction line. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another line, and this time I'm going to use the midpoint, and I'm going to create a vertical construction line from that midpoint that goes up through the center of this. So that theoretically would be my mirror line. Um, I'm not going to use it as a mirror line, but what I'm going to use it for is I want to make sure that this geometry is symmetrical about this axis. So I'm going to make sure that this center point of the circle is coincident with this line. Um, and so that's, again, if, if there's like a trick here, at least for me, I think this is probably it. Um, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that constraint. So I'm going to click on that point of my circle, hold down shift. I'm going to click this line. And I want those guys to be coincident. So I'm going to use that coincident relationship that snaps the center point of that circle to that line. Right. And now, as long as I keep my dimensions accurate, that's going to finish off this sketch. So let's quickly go back and look at this. Uh, this top circle has a radius of 5. These curves have a radius of 10. Um, the overall height is 100, and then that space is 2.5. So hopefully I can keep that all in my head here. Um, I don't have a printout in front of me. So I'll add a sketch dimension. I'll click on this guy. Right now it's a radius of 24. That should be a radius of 5. This may totally mess up my geometry when I do this. Bloop. It did. Um, so what I need to do now is need to just start to reorient this a little bit. Um, I broke my own rule here too. Um, ooh. Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, Brian, what did you do? Okay, so that's a straight line. That's my problem. All right, we're going to delete that. I clearly, when I sketch something, I messed that up. So now I'm going to put this point back to there. So did you guys see what I did? I'm going to hit the undo button. Um, clearly, when I was drawing in, I had done the curve, and then I must have clicked uh, to create a straight line, and it was so small I didn't see it, and that just exposed that issue for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that line and hit the delete key to get rid of it. And I'm going to click this point and click that point to move them together. Now I'm going to add that tangency. So that, that, add a tangency there, and that's going to clean that up. So, um, you know, people make mistakes. I make mistakes. What can I tell you? Uh, okay. And it's just how you fix those mistakes that is the, uh, the answer. All right. I'm going to add now... Uh, my dimension here, and this wants to be a radius of 10. Whoa, there we go. Um, radius of 10. And this is also radius of 10. I can do this in one of two ways. So if I click on this, if I hover over this, this is dimension 2. So what I could do is I could dimension this and make this curve equal dimension 2. That way I'm not typing 10 twice. The other option I have here is to use constraints yet again. So I'm going to click this curve. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click this curve. And I'm going to use the equal constraint here. And that will tie these two together with that same dimension. OK. So this is all starting to be cleaned up here. I've got arc going into arc going into arc. I've got a straight line. I need to add the height dimension here. And I need to add the width dimension here. So I'm going to go back to my dimension line. Uh, I can add the dimension between this point and this point. And I think this is 2.5. I think this, let's go back and look. Yep, 2.5, good. And then I have that height of 100. So we'll do that next. Um, I'm going to add a dimension from this point to that point, and that is going to be 100, and there you go. So fully defined, the sketch is totally black, um, and again, one way of doing it, not the way, it's one way, um, but I think it's pretty clean. It's four dimensions and a whole lot of constraints that tie everything together. Okay, um, so that finishes my sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish Sketch here. So now all we need to do is create the profile that we're going to extrude along this path. And so um, remember that origin point here is really critical. We want to make sure the center of the flat face of the cotter pin aligns with uh, the, middle, the middle of that aligns with the origin point. Um, so let's go ahead and start a new sketch. So I'm going to create sketch. I'm going to choose this perpendicular plane face, which is my happens to be my front face. And uh, I'll orbit a little bit out of profile just so you can see what's going on in relationship. So you can see there's the sketch of uh, the cotter pin shape. And here's my origin point. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little in counterintuitive, but I'm going to invoke the line command, 
And I'm gonna draw a straight line. I think this is like two and a half millimeters. I think it's also two and a half millimeters. I'm gonna draw a straight line, right? What I wanna do is I want the midpoint of this line to fall on this origin point so that it's centered. The weird thing is fusion doesn't have a midpoint line command, and so you have to kind of draw a line and then move it to the midpoint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the midpoint constraint, I'm gonna click this line, and then I'm gonna click the origin point. And that's gonna pin, and you'll see that line now turn black, it's gonna pin that line, the midpoint of that line, to the origin, okay? So that's my first step. I'm gonna zoom in here so I can see what's going on. Then I'm going to go to create and circle, but instead of using the center point circle, because I don't know where the center point of the circle is, um, it's somewhere up here probably. I, what I do know is that it touches these two points, right? So I'm gonna to go to circle and I'm gonna choose the three point circle command. I'm gonna choose this end point, this end point, and then I'm gonna pull the circle up so that the majority of the circle falls to the left of that line. Um, hopefully that makes sense because if I look at my sketch here, I hit escape to get out of here. If I look at my sketch, you see the majority of the circle falls on that side. So I'm just trying to sketch that in. Oh, I was wrong. That's three and a half and the radius is two and a half. I knew there was a two and a half there. Um, so now I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna use the trim command. So the trim command are these little scissors, click on trim. I'm gonna trim the rest of that circle and then add some sketch dimensions. So the radius of this guy was uh, 2.5, and the size of this guy was 3.5. There we go. That finished that off. Everything's fully defined, everything's black. Um, so I can go ahead and now finish that sketch. So that's the hardest part. Um, ooh, I love this perspective view, I can like, go off into the distance with my cutter pin. All right, so now the last thing that we need to do is actually create the sweep. I'm gonna zoom out here. So I have my profile, I have my path. So this is the easy part and the fun part. So I click sweep, uh, profile, select that, path, select this guy, and lo and behold, my cutter pin, there it is. So again, sketches are relatively simple. There's just some real tricks with constraints. Um, and I am a firm believer that you learn by doing, and so hopefully you, you worked and you struggled through that a little bit. Maybe you didn't quite get everything. Um, please don't feel frustrated. That's how you start to learn the program better, is by being uh, kind of pushing your limits and understanding. And so hopefully you start to understand how those constraints can start to really be beneficial to lock in geometry on sketches. Um, uh, and uh, you can see the benefits of doing what we're doing. All right, so that's it. We have a cutter pin. Thank you all for tuning in, and um, uh, I will be back with more Fusion tutorials early next week. Bye.